There was a great piece uh, written by Richard Kim in The Nation. And he starts by saying, ask yourself, do you know the name of any of the victims killed in the West Chemical uh, Fertilizer Company disaster? Do you know how many of them there were? Their ages, aspirations, what they looked like, whether they left behind children or what messages they last posted on Facebook. Do you know if there is an explanation yet for what caused the explosion? He goes on to say you probably don't know the answer to at least all of those, if not most of those questions. Yet 14 people died, many of them first responders, 200 people injured, many of them uh, seriously. And he goes on to write, we pay orders of magnitude more attention to the victims of terrorism than we do to the over 4,500 Americans killed each year while on the job. Labor Secretary Hilda Solis once put it, every day in America, 13 people go to work and never come home. He says, let's imagine that instead of sending a handful of investigators from the ATF and the Chemical Safety Board to West Texas, we marshaled every local, state, and federal resource available to discover the exact sequence of events that led to that explosion. Imagine that the question why became so urgent that the nation simply could not rest until it had overdetermined the answers. We discovered that OSHA hadn't inspected the plant in 28 years. Did this play a role in the disaster? If it's found that the company owns the plant, Ader Grain violated safety regulations as it had at yet another facility, we might call it criminal negligence and attribute culpability. But would we describe ideology? And what ideology would we indict? Deregulation? Austerity? Capitalism? Would we write headlines that say officials seek motive in Texas fertilizer explosion? And could we name profit as that motive in the same way that we might name, say, Islam as the motive for terrorism? Would we arrest the plant's owners, deny them their Miranda rights, and seek to try them in an extra-legal tribunal outside the Constitution, as Senator Lindsey Graham has suggested we treat citizen Dokar Tsarnev? Would we call for a ban on the production of ammonium nitrate in a hideous ammonia? Would we say that gaps and loopholes in our nation's agricultural policies were responsible for the tragedy, as Senator Chuck Grassley has suggested, about immigration? in the Boston bombing case. No, we won't. Because if even if the West Fertilizer plant disaster is ultimately as understood as something more than just an accident, it will, be st it will still be taken as the presumed cost of living in a modern industrialized economy. When it comes to terrorism, we have the opposite response. We launch wars against other countries, denude the Constitution, and create massive state bureaucracies for espionage, covert operations, and assassinations. Since 9-11, it's become political imperative that our nation must express zero tolerance for terrorism, even though, like workplace fa fa uh, fatalities, terrorism has been with us long before globalization lent it a more exotic and threatening provenance. To the problem of violence, there ought to be a path between callous indifference and total social warfare. That's why the miserable and absolute failure of gun control legislation in the Senate just two days after the Boston bombing and on the same day of the West explosion was especially galling. The deaths of those school children were linked to the fate of more than 30,000 victims of gun violence each year, and the impulse was to act, uh, to act was channeled through our democratic system where an overwhelming majority of Americans and majority of the U.N. Senate expressed support for new gun laws, which were nonetheless defeated. So, America, here's your scorecard for the week of April 15, 2013. Callous indifference to total war warfare one. I mean, I think the when we look back on that week, and we see how America reacts to a massive explosion that was surely preventable. 
The question is, how far will we go in the context of providing regulation? How much profit will we, are we willing to destroy, essentially, to prevent those type of explosions, to prevent the deaths of those 15 people, the injuries of those 200? We know the answer for it is what the answer is in terms of what we're willing to do to attempt to prevent terrorism. We will shut down an entire city for a day. A billion dollars worth of economic activity, ongoing diminishment of economic activity in Boston, Copley Square, all those stores are apparently still shut. We know that we're willing to push the boundaries in terms of Mirandizing criminal suspects. We know what we have done to our criminal justice system in our capacity to hold prisoners for three and a half years without charges in the case of Jose Padilla. We know that we're willing to build secret prisons and gulags and hold people who we know are no threat to us indefinitely in Guantanamo. We know that we're, a lot, we're, we're willing to slough off the spying on American citizens, whether they are uh, college students or they're in their places of worship, if they're Muslim. We know that we're willing to empower police departments like the New York City Police Department, to spy on people well out of their jurisdiction and within their jurisdiction. We know that we're willing to prosecute whistleblowers who report that the NSA is not only not effectively finding intelligence, but doing so because they want to uh, privatize the system. We know that we're willing to hold People prisoner like uh, Bradley Manning charged them with espionage, charged them as if they were spies as opposed to someone who was uh, whistleblowing stuff to major news outfits. I mean, the list goes on and on. What we're willing to do to attempt to prevent, uh, pre uh, prevent terrorism we're willing to provide literally millions upon millions of dollars to police departments so that they can buy, and I've been corrected by a, a listener, we'll talk about that in a minute, but armored vehicles, not tanks, and devices that will incapacitate crowds uh, through audio uh, through uh, you know audio cannons essentially we know what we're willing to do that in terms of preventing terrorism to fundamentally chip away at our civil liberties but when it comes to preventing explosions if there's any diminishment of profit, then that's completely off the table. The millions of dollars that have been spent by just a fertilizer lobby, by <clears throat> the petrochemical lobby, to roll back the power of the EPA and of uh, legislation to regulate these types of facilities. The money that has been starved from OSHA to make sure that people are working in safe, safe plants. The pressure that's been put on the EPA not to exercise its ability to go out and investigate these types of facilities, even though there's been a record of safety violations by this own company, by this facility. We apparently don't have the political will to do that.
we don't have the political will to say, hey, if you purchase a, um, a gun you, in any context, you need to make sure there needs to be a background check. Uh, apparently, what I've seen in terms of the reporting, those two terrorists did not have licenses to carry their weapons. We don't know where they got them. We don't know any of the details about that. But there's no record of them having a license to do so. But we don't have the, po we don't have the political will to do anything about these problems.